Welcome back, everyone, to these aren't the nerds you're looking for. Kevin Hort here. Lorenzo Fon over here. Today, uh, we've got a Clone Wars episode for you, Assassin, which is season three, episode seven, production number 221. Uh, this is Clone Wars episode number 51 for us. Yep. How about that? We are moving right along here. We've broken the 50. Yes. How's everything going out in California for you? Weather's beautiful, I'm sure. Yep. It's raining today, you know, but nothing nearly as bad as the uh, polar vortex that you just found yourself in. So Yeah, I don't even know. Uh, I had to, <laughs> We do snow removal at work, so yesterday I had to go out and do some salting last night, which is, you know, whatever. It's part of the job, but uh, the the radio, the news radio program that I listen to... Uh, was saying that I didn't catch the beginning of it, but I caught the I caught the middle and the end of it, and I guess it was cold enough that you shouldn't be walking around outside exercising your vocal cords because something with uh yeah you're not supposed to take deep breaths basically because that air is cold enough to basically fuck up your lungs well it's they were saying it was cold enough to actually freeze in your esophagus yeah so no no talking outside which is nuts but the good thing is tomorrow it's going to be like 40 and uh sunday a couple days from now it's going to (laughs) be uh 60 that's quite the swing it is quite quite the the swing. swing Yeah, yesterday morning was uh, actual temperature zero, real feel, negative 25, which is nothing compared to what other parts of the country are experiencing. But, uh, you know, St. Louis area was colder than the North Pole and the South Pole and Alaska and a lot of (laughs) things in between. So hooray for that. Yeah, I think my buddy in Chicago sent me and he said it got down to like wind chill of minus 50 to 60 or something like that mm-hmm. so yeah is, what i had heard was actual temperature like negative 25 wind yeah, chill like negative brutal. 50 so that's, that's some brutal stuff uh, that's ridiculous yeah anyway we're talking about uh some sort of assassin this week i guess uh, yep so our fortune cookie this week actually before before i get to that uh, directed by Kyle Dunleavy, and this episode is written by one Miss Katie Lucas. Yeah. Uh, George Lucas's second daughter. Very right? nice. And I think that uh, this, I don't think this is the first Katie Lucas episode that we've had. I honestly don't remember. But anyway. <laughs> I'm scanning real quick. Not seeing anything else. Anyway, yeah, Katie Lucas wrote this one, so we'll see how that goes. We are firmly in 21 BBY as far as the timeline goes. And uh, to follow that, Fortune Cookie says, The future has many paths. Choose wisely. So uh, who you got this week for our opening quote? Uh, this is Yoda. Yoda all the way. Yoda all the way. Yeah, my first, the first thing I wrote down was uh, that old ass knight from Indiana Jones. Uh, right. But as far as we know, he is not part of the Star Wars universe. So, save for that nice fan theory that's been propagated by Star Wars Minute that all of Indiana Jones is a fever dream of Han Solo when he is frozen in carbonite interesting and uh i mean there are hieroglyphics with c-3po and r2d2 in them mm-hmm. in the indiana jones universe um there's also some crossover get, actors right clearly so. to get even deeper if you go to the indiana jones themed bar in disney springs in the walt disney world resort there are r2d2 and c-3po references in there as well wonderful yeah, the bartender pointed that out to me. <laughs> General Veers shows up in Indiana Jones. Uh, Porkin shows up in Indiana Jones, which is funny because his name in Star Wars is Porkins because he's a portly mm-hmm. fellow, I guess. I don't know why the name was chosen, but in Indiana Jones, he is uh, one major Eaton. 
Very nice. <laughs> so, but yeah, and the guys over at, uh, I don't know if the guys at Star Wars Minute uh, created this fan theory or not, but uh, the guys at Indiana Jones it. Minute definitely ran with it. So when uh, they kind of have a running, <laughs> a running tally of all of the evidence of the fever dream. So very nice. It's an amusing addition to their show. So check that one out. But yeah, Yoda, the future yep. has many paths. Choose wisely. Uh, with it. Our newsreel is a recap of the Death Trap arc and the Corruption arc. Uh, one thing that stuck, or a couple things that stuck out to me in the newsreel before we even get to the episode is that uh-huh. it says that Ahsoka has grown strong in the in the ways of the Force. So they're talking like it shows flashbacks of the death trap three episode arc. And yes. then the narrator's like, and since then Ahsoka has grown, grown strong in the ways of the force. And then it's showing like a couple of clips of the corruption, the two episode corruption arc. And mm-hmm. then it's, then he says now after several harrowing adventures with her master, the two returned to the Jedi temple to, to, I don't know, receive their, their next mission. Right. Uh, yes. so, the narrator sounds like the way he explains it, there's more time that has elapsed than, um, than it seems than that like the five stories that we have progressed. seen. But I thought it was interesting that they make the note that like she has had, she has grown so much stronger in the ways of the force over these two or three or four, however long yeah, it's been. Yeah, I thought it was weird too because watching this in the order that we have watched i agree it doesn't seem like that much time and honestly she hasn't been i mean she was in the last episode she was involved she was you know heavily involved in the last episode but overall in the the two arcs you know between these five episodes i agree it's it's a weird it's a weird thing to say Mm -hmm. because we haven't seen that much of her so i think yeah it's weird it's weird to me too I think I might have an answer. What is that? The answer is that Death Trap was... Nope. Yep. Okay. Death Trap was season two, episode 20. So, like, those three episodes were the last of season two. And then Corruption and Academy are episodes five and six of season three. So, in the actual span of time from watching... Uh, from watching Death Trap to watching The Academy Assassin. would have been mm-hmm. six months. All the same, it, it it just doesn't make sense from a chronological story sense. When that's you know, because I did I looked it up too as soon as that was mentioned. You know, but like let's say even if somebody was binge watching this, right, like. So maybe not real world time air date differentials. Just we're still only five or six episodes in between, right? From season finale of season two. You know what are we? We're on three oh seven here. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, all so the same. Even if you're even if you're binge watching this, you're you know just six more stories in between here between starting season three up to this. Right. So it's, it's, it's we get that weird we get that weird, weird verbiage sometimes where uh and I think that has to do with like when stories are written and when things are finalized and how things are potentially shifted around kinda in order of release and uh who knows what, but uh Sometimes we get some funky information that pops up in like the newsreel or something, and it just if you're watching closely, it just kind of throws a throws a question at you. So not even that. It just it just doesn't sit right sometimes. So that that's anyway. another way. That's another way to yeah. say it. But anyway, want... so what happens in this story proper here? 
In the story proper, Anakin and Ahsoka appear in front of the Jedi Council. Yoda is like super congratulatory of Ahsoka, which is interesting because he's not necessarily one to throw out compliments all the time. Uh, Anakin gets sent to Balith. Is that the name of the place? Yeah. I don't know. Or Balith, I think. Balith. There we go. Long A. Balith. Anakin gets sent to Balith because there is a large-scale civil war there, and they have requested uh, some aid, whatever that means. I guess one guy is going to go and calm everybody down. A dude that's known to rush in with his lightsaber and act first and think second probably isn't the best the best person to send in to help dissolve uh, nah. a civil war. Side plots. Mm, I don't know. Whatever. It's basically Anakin needs to go one way and Ahsoka's like, oh sweet, I've never been to Baylith. And they're like, yeah, you're not going. We need your report. Right. Do some paperwork. Yeah, she needs to, yeah, she needs to file her paperwork before she can do anything else. So Anakin... But it's, it's really interesting because really quickly it changes from filing a report to staying behind for studies not even studies not even just to study in general but uh when anakin leaves ahsoka's like oh let me go with you and he was like no you need to stay here finish your studies like, right go ahead and graduate and then when you're graduated i'll come back and pick you up and we'll go have some more adventures but no more homeschooling with me like you need to do the official thing so yeah you, she doesn't she doesn't necessarily do any paperwork in this. Uh, as soon as Anakin leaves, it cuts to uh, Ahsoka like sleeping. She has a vision. And her vision is of an attack by Aura Singh on somebody. Uh, we just have pronouns thrown out there like attack her, kill her, don't worry, she will die, stuff like that. Uh, so Ahsoka wakes up in a panic. She goes to see Yoda as one does when... They have something going on, and they don't really know, because this would justify uh, Yoda having taught many generations of Jedi Knights for a thousand years, right? Or, Mm -hmm. I guess not a thousand, because he wasn't a thousand years old. Nine hundred years, right? Yeah. Before centuries, yeah. Yeah, pretty close. But, uh, so, Yoda says these are premonitions, uh, Ahsoka... At this point, reveals she says, I know what I said in my report. So, the thing that they told her that she needed to stay back to do is already complete. Right. But she says, I know what I said in my report, but uh, I think that Aura Singh is still alive, and I think she's going to kill someone close to me. It was at this point that I expected Yoda to give her, like, the no attachments, be careful of your feelings and yada, 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 but he doesn't. He's just like, okay, well, tell me about it. Uh, Are these dreams or are they other than dreams? So he decides that they're they're visions. He says, don't underestimate them, and then basically tells her to meditate on it. So at this point, we cut to Ahsoka in the library uh, where she is lamenting to herself, and because she is uh, often secluded in this episode, she does a bit of talking to herself to kind of exposit what's going on to the mm-hmm. audience as though we couldn't tell anyway. But she's definitely like, I'd rather be fighting, is what the bumper sticker would be on the back of her uh, her iMac or whatever. I don't know. I have a PC. I don't. I don't know. Apple products. <laughs> <Her> MacBook. <laughs> MacBook. That's that's the thing. Was iMac a thing? Is that a? Yes, that's the desktop version. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's in the library, so maybe. <laughs> they don't have personal computers. They don't have possessions, man. Nothing personal. They still have data pads. <laughs> yeah, but you gotta check them out and turn them back in and fill out a uh, damage report and all that jazz. But anyway. Anyways. <laughs> Jocasta New drops off a bunch of data chips, and she's like, here, these will help in your studies. And Ahsoka promptly just dozes off and has another vision. Mm -hmm. Uh, In this one, Aura is definitely like, I'm going to kill her or something, and then you see a flash of Padme. So Ahsoka wakes up at that point, and 
all but looks into the camera and says, Aura Singh is going to kill Padme. I figured it out. So she goes to warn Padme. Um, Padme's kind of milling around doing stuff. Ahsoka lets her know that she's been having these bad dreams and that there's this very dangerous bounty hunter after her. Uh, Ahsoka's like, oh, that's nice to know. Thanks, little girl, but I got this thing that I'm doing with Bail, and we're putting on this peace summit, and uh, I've got security, so everything's going to be good. I, you know, I'm going to go. Uh, the next thing, the next thing we see is Ahsoka back in her room. She's meditating and trying to figure out, I guess, more, like, look deeper into these visions. It's kind of what I got mm-hmm. out of it. Yeah. She goes back to talk to Yoda again. Um, Yoda, totally not surprised. He's just like, hmm, send her Padme, you say. Think about this, you must. Do what you will. You know, he's just, doesn't even really give her some advice. He's just like, hmm, think about what's going on. Interesting Carry that on. it's yeah. <laughs> interesting that it's Padme. Uh, yeah. I think Yoda's putting some things into his Anakin file, right? This is <laughs> this is Anakin's apprentice who said that it was somebody that was close to her. Now she mm-hmm. identifies that person as Senator Amidala. And Yoda's like always with Anakin, this Amidala shows up, you know. So I think this is just kind of mental fuel for the fire. Yoda knows what's going on. And I guess, so I know that other people have talked about it. I don't know that we've addressed it specifically. How many, how many of the Jedi council know that Anakin is having this illicit relationship with Padme? I, I honestly thought it was none of them. Like, there there are suspicions, but there's not confirmation, right? Okay. I think we've had this discussion before where nobody knows for sure, but Yoda might be able to discern that there's something happening there. I think Obi-Wan knows. I don't think so, because Obi-Wan gets seems pretty surprised in Revenge of the Sith when the idea of, you know... Uh, like, they all know Amidala's pregnant do they because she's supposed to be hiding it and i'm using air quotes Uh, right but uh because like well if they well yeah so if they don't either way obi-wan is shocked at the end when she's like passed out and giving birth to children Mm -hmm. you know and then like the idea that they're twins so like they're really quickly going through this information of like oh shit Amidala's pregnant, she has twins, and they belong to Anakin. Mm-hmm. You know. So, if Obi-Wan knows, then why is he shocked then? I think he's shocked that it's twins. I think uh-huh. that uh, she had been hiding her pregnancy, and as soon as he sensed that there was a baby growing in her, he's like, yeah, it's Anakin. Like, this shit is deeper than I thought. But uh, because even we watch Revenge of the Sith, but doesn't he doesn't he ask to well, he like because he like I said, he's surmising a lot. He's he's assuming a lot because he goes to Padme and he asks, he's like, the child is Anakin's. Right. And she then that is what she like starts crying. And then he says something like how unfortunate or or something like that. Right. And then that's how they end up on Mustafar. Yeah, because she knows where Anakin went, and he right. stows away on the ship. But even back in Attack of the Clones, when they're in the lat on like chasing Dooku, and they run out of fucking laser bullets, which doesn't make right. like their guns ran out of energy. I guess they're overheated, man. Yeah, I guess. Or <laughs> <But> anyways, <laughs> I don't know. Like other lats shot off like. 50 billion million and this one can only shoot off like 40 billion million i don't know but um you know it pushes the plot forward i suppose but when uh when padme what what's up when padme Padme falls out of the ship right and anakin's like turn the ship around obi-wan straight says something about 
like, we have a mission, it doesn't matter what you feel about her. Mm -hmm. So he knows at that point that there's something going on between them. Well, again, I think it's just, I don't, the leap to a romantic relationship is big, though. You know, like, maybe he, he realizes that Anakin is feeling some sort of attachment to her, you know? Okay. But it might not be anything different than what Obi-Wan himself has with Anakin. Right? So they have a romantic relationship is what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is, like, they they live in this weird zone where it's, like, Obi-Wan and Anakin are friends, but isn't that some sort of attachment right there? So then, like, if Obi-Wan had fallen out, Anakin might have freaked out the same way. Right? Okay. I can I can understand where you're coming from. I don't agree. Right. So like, but like it's I'm just a big leap, and there's no evidence there for me to be like, yeah, Obi Wan clearly sees that they're banging. Like that's that's the leap I can't make from just that one scene. I'm, okay. Does that make sense? I will take I will take that argument, and I will counter with moving forward. Anytime I see some potential proof. Right. We're going to take it on the list. Right. And that that's fine. I just, yeah, like many pieces of evidence, but just like a one thing, like, you know, like people I'm not romantically involved with, if they fell out of my car, you know, like. But what like, if you I had could, a mission to kill the evil president of the bad people? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like I would still freak out about my friend falling out of the car. Even if it was, like, Lee Harvey Oswald in the car in front of me that I needed to chase. Right? Even if you would get kicked out of the Jedi Order? I'm not saying I would stop and turn around. I'm just saying I'd still freak out the way Anakin does. Yeah, but he's ready to, like... But then if you are in the car with me, it's not like you go, like, oh, clearly you and that dude are banging. I don't know. I jump to conclusions. (laughs) Clearly. I, I cannot I cannot say that I would not draw that conclusion. <laughs> but anyways, moving on. Moving on, since uh, Yoda is kind of nonplussed that it is Padme, he basically says, be careful, many futures there are. Uh, and I guess that kind of gives Ahsoka carte blanche for what she's going to do moving forward, because... She just gives herself her own mission. She goes over to Padme's apartment or wherever Padme is, and they're loading up the ship to take off, headed to Alderaan, which is kind of cool that we get to see Alderaan. And Mm -hmm. uh, she basically implores Padme to let her go with her. She's like, you know, I got a bad feeling about this, and I need to stick around and just see what's going on, and... Padme is basically like, uh, you know, I'll let the little kid tag along. There's, there's no, no harm, no foul here. Right. So, you know, come along if, if you need to, if that's what you feel you need to do. So, uh, yeah, at that point, they all get on the ship. Ship takes off. Uh, there's a left to right wipe here, and I don't know why, but the other day I was, I was thinking to myself, does the Clone Wars often use? the George Lucasian wipe for scene changes. And I've never noted it in the past, so I was like, I'm going to start looking for this. Wipes have happened often, yeah. Is it a regular thing? Yeah. Is it just something that I don't pay attention to because I've I've seen (laughs) thousands of hours worth of Star Wars? Probably, but yeah, for you to make it through 51 episodes (laughs) and... Notice wipes now, yeah. Wipes in any and all directions, yeah. Nice. Um, okay. Wipes, wipes down, wipes up, wipes left, right, wipes right, diagonal wipes, and irises. Yeah, we definitely talk about, like, iris in, like, at the end of the episode, for sure. Yeah, at the end of the episode, for sure. But, like, even during the episode, on occasion, there have definitely been irises. They've all been used at some point up to this point. Here. Okay. Yeah. I th- like diagonally speaking, I don't know if every direction has been used, but definitely like up, down, left, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I figured as much, but it's not some a 
obviously it's not something that I've been paying attention to. So when it <laughs> when it hit my brain, like, is this a thing that happens all the time? This is the first episode that I watched since then. And so I just had to ask the question. So right. it might make me, you know, seem like I'm not paying attention, but I guess I'm just not paying attention to those things. Anyway, <laughs> we are now, I guess, in hyperspace on Padme's ship. Uh, Ahsoka and Padme are playing Dejaric, which is hollow chess, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Ahsoka looks all depressed, and I thought it was because she's got like all this stuff going on in her head, and she doesn't know how to process all these all these images and uh, you know foreseeing potential futures and whatnot. But it turns out that she just lost, and. Yep. Padme's like, hey, you'll get better at the game someday. Maybe you'll beat me then. And then uh, Ahsoka does tell her, like, oh, I'm real sad because I don't know. Like, I'm not very confident and yada, yada, yada. And then Padme gives her a nice pep talk and tries to cheer her up by telling her, like, hey, when I was queen, I didn't know what was going on. I had all kinds of advisors, but really, like, all the decisions fell on my shoulders and that's a lot of weight. And I wasn't real confident then, but I learned to trust myself mm-hmm. and Ahsoka feels better because the Greek queen Amidala was a little bit insecure at one point in time. So that makes it okay for her to be insecure. Yeah. So, but I mean, who wouldn't be insecure as a 14 year old queen of a planet? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens after that? Pam gives a pep talk. Relatable story. Ahsoka. They basically get to Alderaan, right? Or no. Ahsoka we get some more Ahsoka meditation. sleeping and right. Ahsoka visions. I will say Ahsoka never sleeps under a blanket. She just sleeps on top of the blanket. Or yeah. uh, Jedi beds don't look too comfortable. I would assume that they would need some type of comfy bedding in like their dedicated room if they have dedicated rooms at the Jedi Temple uh, because they got a pretty stressful job and sometimes you need to unwind you know right just relax in some form that isn't just pure meditation yeah which also brings another question is there 10,000 rooms at the Jedi Temple for all 10,000 Jedi possibly I mean or at least like large dormitories, right? Like there, there are probably some shared rooms happening, but there are possibly that many beds. Because the, even the complex does look large, right? Because it looks like even Ahsoka has like her own bedroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not like you know maybe the younglings are all they bunk you know, together. But yeah, once like together and that's like why everybody wants to be a Padawan because you get your own bedroom. Something like that, right? Yeah. Huh. You get to use that the, or they're living really close by, you know. You get to use the prefect toilet. There might be like some living quarters like down the street. Like there might be like a Oh, I think it's I think it's all self contained in the Jedi Temple. I don't think they're uh-huh. I don't think they're you know. Cause like the complex does look big enough. But, mm-hmm. like, every time we see large portions of it, there's a lot of open air, large open rooms. You know, that's the only thing that confuses me, too. So. Well, def- all the Jedi bedrooms are definitely, like, on the outside because they all have, like, Venetian blinds. Yeah. So they all have a view out. So, so it's they're like, all, uh, like, on the outer ring. So, like, the whole thing is built like the... uh the Luxor Pyramid Hotel in Las Vegas. Have you ever been inside that building? I've never been inside Nevada. Oh, <laughs> well, the you know that that famous pyramid at mm-hmm. the end of the Las Vegas Strip with the light on top. Mm-hmm. The hotel rooms are all lined up against the four slanted walls of that that uh, that building, and then the casino floor is the base, but. You know, if you're in the casino and you look straight up, Mm -hmm. you can see, like, every hallway of every hotel room, essentially, you know? That's fucking awesome. It's open on the inside. Um, 
So it's I've never stayed at that hotel. I'm very curious. I'm assuming there for like all the windows are slanted and stuff. Um, the uh, the only thing I'm not sure of is like if like where the elevators are located, how you get up the elevators, and also you know how far spaced some of these elevators are from other rooms. You know, like if you're in one corner of that hotel, do you have to walk all the way to the middle? Like, towards the base, that's like if you're on the third or fourth floor, that's like a, or you know, there's no third floor technically speaking, but you know, that's a long walk across. Right. If you're in room three oh six. Right. So, you know, but otherwise, like from the inside geometry of, uh, how how that building works, um, it's it's the first time I went in there when I was younger, I I didn't realize that's what i was looking at but i remember like looking up i'm like this is a really like big atrium that they have in here and then you can see the uh the staggered ceiling i guess you know and then you can see people walking around i'm like oh those are the hotel rooms oh that's how that works um did you grow up with the griswolds is that why (laughs) vacations are too no, Las we just Vegas really no, we really enjoyed Vegas as a kid. Uh, when I was a kid, I don't know why. Uh, a, a a big part of it too is my family always liked. Um, in the late nineties, a lot of my family were getting married very rapidly. Um, so it was like my my mom's siblings and my mom's cousins and some of my mom's younger aunts and uncles that were about her age you know my my grandma's generation had like 15 kids so there's a there was a spread there mm-hmm. um so after a while what we ended up doing was um we would fly into vegas stay there for a couple of nights do our thing rent a car and drive like the four or five hours into la mm-hmm. you know or go from vegas and drive like the eight hours up to San Jose Bay area, you know, for whatever we, I, we have family on both, both ends of uh, California. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, so we kind of built multiple little trips into one larger trip is what we did all the time. Right. You know? Like, so, a, like it's a multication. Right. Yeah. Like the one time I've been on a cruise, we, <laughs> drove down to Orlando, went to Walt <coughs> Disney World and Universal Studios for like a couple of days, then kept driving to I don't remember which port we exited out of, but Port Disney. No, it, it was before it, it predates uh when Disney got into the cruise game. That's how long ago I went on a cruise. Um we went on uh, a cruise that no longer exists and it's the big red boat. Um and it had Water Brother characters, so I remember getting tucked in by the Tasmanian Devil. That's a little uh, creepy. He should was it probably Taz or Bugs? It was he, either Taz or Bugs. Regardless of who it was, they probably <laughs> should not have been in your room. I'll have to find you pictures because it was like, uh, I wanted, I, I'm very curious. My mom later on was like, yeah, it wasn't cheap. <laughs> you know who was not tucked in by a Tasmanian Devil? Yourself. <laughs> Ahsoka, because she oh, doesn't Pad- use blankets. Pad- yeah. So, yeah. So, during her uh, sleep, what happens here? She's uh she's laying on top of the blankets and everything again. She's got more visions and uh I guess this particular vision makes her believe that Padme is going to be attacked immediately. So, she runs down the hall and breaks into Padme's room? I don't know. Enters Padme's room. She doesn't we'll break it. in, but like a security guard kind of sees her panic, opens the door, she rushes in. She rushes in, jumps on the bed, lightsabers drawn, and is like, the assassin is here! Yeah, freaks Padme the fuck out. Panics everyone. Padme has some really nice, crimped, uh, sleeping bed hair. I will say right. that. Yeah. She's, uh, she's a well- <laughs> kept individual even when she is woken up in the middle of the night by uh yeah. a young padawan with lightsabers drawn yeah. but uh, she's ready to make her public appearances at any moment it seems this is not the first time that a padawan has jumped on her bed with a lightsaber no 
So yeah. I guess, you know, with with practice comes uh, perfection. So, yeah, false alarm. Ahsoka looks all sad. She's walking down the hallway. Our ship lands on Alderaan. Uh, Padme, Ahsoka, and crew are greeted by Bail Organa, which is nice. You know, yeah. they're doing this thing together. Uh, sometimes I question who should be kind of uh, greeting different ships or whatever when they come in. Like when Chancellor Palpatine is consistently like on the landing dock greeting anyone and everyone, including the Zillow Beast when it comes to Coruscant. That doesn't necessarily make sense, but this does, you know. They got this thing that they set up. She's presumably staying at his palace, I guess. He lives in a palace, right? Is that what we call it? I think so, yeah. I don't know. His wife's the queen. But uh, he says, let's uh, show you to your quarters. Padme, all of her guards, everybody goes into the room, and Ahsoka just sits down on the carpet outside, kind of looking at the door and starts meditating. She has a brief vision, uh, gets up, Goes inside, requests to talk to Padme in private, which Captain Typho doesn't leave. I missed like a half a second. Does Padme ask him to leave and then he says, no, no I'm just, sticking around. She just walks around the couch, basically. Because mm-hmm. I thought Typho she said, kind of Captain, follows. can I have a second? But then he's also there anyway. I think she just says, can I have a second to... I think it's like Mon Mothma and oh, okay. Bale or that, that makes more something sense. like that. Yeah. So Ahsoka apologizes that uh, she was, she's like, I was wrong last night, but trust me tonight is when it's going to happen. Yeah. And, and Padme in response is just like, I, I mean, I trust you. Don't, don't worry. False mm-hmm. alarms will happen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and she's like, I hang out with Jedi all the time. I'm kind of used to this. <laughs> so. Right. I sleep with, I mean, I don't sleep with one, but <laughs> my apartment is in view of the Jedi temple. So that's, right. that's what I meant. So Captain Typho is like, so did you see where this happened in your vision? She's like, yeah, it was in like a big ass room. And uh, he's like, would you recognize the room? So then they go and they check out the... Uh, my notes, in my notes I wrote auditorium, but later it's not really like an auditorium. It's just kind of like a meeting room because this was, this was much more intimate than, than what I had expected it to be. Um, I didn't think it was going to be as grand as like the Senate chambers, like well, not yeah. that large, but, um, cause she's technically attending a conference, mm-hmm. you know, cause it's weird. Cause it's like, it has like the geometry of a large university classroom but at like a quarter of the capacity does that make sense it has uh it has the dimensions of a movie theater on a sitcom i guess you know what i'm saying like you when you watch drake and josh on the disney channel and <laughs> They go to a movie, it's like 10 rows wide and 7 rows deep. Something like that, yeah. But it's not even like the new reserve seating with like heated recliners. It's just like the old dollar theater chairs. Right. Or like folding chairs. But then like what's weird is like they had, they, everybody has like a desk, like a long table in front of them that that traverses the chairs. Mm -hmm. But then like each row is pretty damn deep like the table's not deep the chairs aren't deep but there seems to be a lot of space between like the chair and the table behind it it's like a fart like, buffer zone right like if i had to guess how many people are in this room it's it's like 50 to 100 yeah i kind of gathered like it, that it's not a large room at all you know whereas like a university like classroom one of the big auditorium ones you mm-hmm. know what i would consider an auditorium can hold like 300 people sometimes right right, right. yeah and they still have like the little mini desks and stuff i definitely expected right. it to to even be more like that size right uh, this is more like a private college size 
Yeah, it's it's much smaller than that, but it it has kind of that same dimension. It's not as deep as that. You know, the stadium seating doesn't like rise right up, but there's there there's a gradual mm-hmm. climb. A little you know? bit. Yeah. So Ahsoka does decide that this is the place where the assassination is going to happen, and uh, we just kind of cut to the. But she's, to... Go but ahead. she's still not able to figure out where the assassination attempt will be made. She just knows this is the the main room. Right. Um, she knows Padme will be here. She right. does not know where the assassin will be. Completely. Uh, the next scene is Padme and Ahsoka on a balcony, chit-chatting, and uh, kind of having some more pep talk action from Padme to Ahsoka. Because Ahsoka, Ahsoka straight comes out and says you know i'm real i'm confused i'm confused about this vision because my vision is telling me one thing reality is telling me another thing um padme is basically determined to continue with she calls it a summit like this peace summit right yeah um but she does give some advice to ahsoka and it didn't stick out as much as her first bit of pep talk did. Mm-hmm. So after that, well, like the pep talk kind of goes the other way because Ahsoka's kind of freaking out. Ahsoka's telling, I think it's in the scene. She's basically, basically telling Padme that she should go back to Coruscant in the scene. Right? Mm-hmm. She's definitely urging her to, to return. Like you don't have to do right. this. You need to leave. Like something's not good here. Got but a bad Padme, vibe. Yeah, Padme wisely, in my opinion, mentions to Ahsoka, it's like, I'm a major senator that doesn't give a fuck about shit, and therefore it pisses people off, and this is this is a normal part of my life. Right, so I basically, need to still, doing like, what I'm, I do creates yeah. enemies and or people that don't like me, so... Right. Uh, so I, but I still need to do what I got to do because otherwise I wouldn't be doing my job. This is like Indiana Jones and his dad, uh, when the Nazis are trying to shoot him down and there's like, they're being chased by Nazis and planes and bullets are flying and all kinds of shit. And, uh, Dr. Jones says they're trying to kill us. And, and he's like, yeah. And he's like, this is a new experience for me. I, I don't I don't know how to react to this. And he's like, yeah, it happens to me all the time. But uh, instead of the person who doesn't know how to deal with it being older, it's a younger Ahsoka. And uh, that makes Padme Indiana Jones. We're just yeah. going to talk about Indiana Jones this entire episode. We'll just do that. It's all good. So, all right. So what happens after this? The Peace Summit begins. Bale gives a talk. Uh, this part was, I thought, really well crafted where the, like the important part isn't the peace summit. The important part is the way that Ahsoka is interacting with her emotions and the environment. Cause yes. like she gets, she gets this vibe and, uh, she gets this feeling. And when that happens, like the music changes, the, the actual summit is kind of, muffled out like you can kind of hear it it fades in and out and Mm -hmm. uh, what would be her what would have been her vision is kind of played out between her perspective and Aura Singh's perspective Mm -hmm. and I don't know if Aura is in a hallway a balcony an oversized air vent something that's overlooking yeah, that part is slightly confusing to me because I originally thought, like, from the visions, it looks like an air duct. Mm-hmm. In certain shots, it still looks like an air duct, but then it kind of backs off and it has, it, it has like, it's a overarching corridor of some sort. Yeah, thinking like thinking about it after the fact, because I, I also thought that it was an air duct. Right. But then, like, there's a guard in there, and I was like, okay, so they stationed a guard in the air duct. That's cool. But it's big right. enough for them to, like, run around through. Yeah. Uh, so maybe it's just, like, a hallway that uh, goes around the perimeter of this conference room. Yeah. And 
So Aura kills a guard. She's get she's set up. Ahsoka figures out what's going on. She takes off running. Um, Captain Typho and the rest of the security force are just standing there. Like, they don't do anything. They know Ahsoka had these visions of Padme being assassinated. And Ahsoka just took off. And they're just like, well, whatever. Well, like, what's weird is we see Ahsoka running around a little bit. And then it cuts back to Captain Typho. And then he notices, like, he has, like, a shock that Ahsoka is gone. Which okay. is weird because you would think they would notice that. Right. Because I thought they noticed that, but we're just kind of letting her do her own thing. But then it cuts back to them, and Typho was like, where did Ahsoka go? He's when like, did oh, that shit. happen? The yeah. little orange blur that just fucking sprinted past me? Right. And also, she was standing in front of all of them, right? Does, so. she, I, does she not have, like, dress attire? No, she only has one set like, of clothing, I guess. Tube top, tights, skirt, yep, boots. Skirt. That's all. Uh, but it's not like we're going to an official function here. Maybe I should wear like something. Put on different. robes. Like wear the official Jedi robes. Maybe. Or, you know, something. anything more than a tube top. But yeah, no, that's all. But yeah, that's so she she, she runs down the the air duct hallway balcony thing. And uh, she doesn't have enough time to get there to, like, disarm Aura. But what she does, she gives, like, a nice force push, which mm-hmm. re-angles the barrel of the gun uh, as Aura's squeezing the trigger. So instead of a direct hit, uh, we've got a little graze wound. Tis but a flesh wound. And uh, they have a little bit of a tussle, they being Ahsoka and Aura Singh. Uh, Aura takes off, gets away, and then the shot of Ahsoka when Aura, when like she knows Aura saying, got away, right? Shit, can't do anything. Mm-hmm. Is this weird T intersection where the hallway, like, it's like an air duct where the intersection would be going from one floor to the next, where you have a complete horizontal and then there's a shaft that goes up. Yeah. This is why the definition of what this area is is kind of fuzzy. Yeah. So at that point, we cut back to... Uh, Bale calls for a medical droid. So we go over there, and then... We're back in Padme's room, right? We're back in Padme's room after she gets kind of patched up by a med droid or whatever. So yeah, it comes she just in. has her arm in a sling. She only got hit in the shoulder. Mm. Um, Ahsoka apologizes and Padme's like for what you're right mm-hmm. and you saved my life mm-hmm. basically and then Ahsoka pleads with her again to go back to Coruscant Padme's like nope like we put this thing on I'm the most important person here I'm gonna stay well, even even Bale mentions something Bale's like I kind of agree you should probably get out of here mm-hmm. while you're still safe you know you've already been shot um, but and then uh, she denies who, she denies that plea, and then Ahsoka's like, "Okay, well, if you're gonna stay, I got an idea." Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is for like that night speech, so I don't know if it's like the same speech that she was giving in the morning, and the evening, or if this is like a two part conference or something like that. If yeah, it's two, maybe it's like a like continuing two different, discussion. Yeah, I didn't know if it was that or if it was like two different groups of people, or or what, um, but. It's the night speech. So that evening they've got, uh, it just goes from that scene to the next scene is like the beginning of the second part. Right. And it's just a parade of guards, Bail Organa, Padme, Ahsoka, all coming into, into the thing. Padme at this point is wearing what could be described as some pretty ornate Jedi robes. Yeah. Ahsoka, still no robes. Nope. Uh, We see Aura Singh sneaking around. Ahsoka has these really, really intense detective eyes going on. Yeah. I don't know if you have ever... uh, How to put this? Okay. So a friend of mine, a friend of mine's a police officer, right? Uh Uh-huh. And 
on the occasions that we all get together and we go out to uh, hang out as adults, right? There are occasions where we'll go places and his eyes are darting all over the fucking room, like nonstop mm-hmm. all the time, taking in all information, right? Because that's what his job is, is to be an information gatherer among other things, right? Uh, and this is the way that I saw Ahsoka in this instant. So I thought the her the portrayal of her behavior, I thought was spot on, like... This was nice. She is there in her eyes to make sure that shit doesn't fucking go down. And she knows something's going to happen because it already happened once. She's had all these visions and she's got every, every means of information collection on like high alert. Yeah. I don't know if she has ears, but if she did... Does she? Does she have ears? I, I'm sure she has some sort of... She has some sort of auditory organ, but regular yeah. humanoid ears, I don't think she has. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. She's reaching <laughs> out with her feeling. She's hearing. She's seeing. She's smelling. She's tasting the air. Whatever it is. She's on super high alert. Um, Padme's speech starts... A, Ahsoka gets a funny feeling. We see Aura sneaking around through some actual vents this time, I think. She's crawling this time. She's, She's definitely like crawling. on all fours. She has less yeah. room, but it's basically the same kind of decor. It's like the same. It's like the hallway she was in, only about a quarter of the size. Right. Uh, at this point, Padme is revealed to actually be a decoy droid. So... Yeah. The figure that was that was paraded in front of all these people uh, was actually a droid. That's why the big ornate robes, right? Um, we see Padme in another room. She's chilling, sitting on a table or something. She's got a com link, and she's on her bed. I think is she on her bed? She's on her bed. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know what she was on. <laughs> Uh, we see Ahsoka running. Ahsoka figures out what's going on because she was talking to Captain Typho, I think, and saying, uh, Orsing, Orsing's not here. She's not in the room. She's mm-hmm. not here. And Typho's like, what do you mean she's not here? I thought you said she was going to be here. So uh, Ahsoka figures out what's going on. And we kind of cut back and forth between, you know, little snippets of, of action, but... Uh, so what happens is, I guess Aura was smart enough to figure out that Padme wasn't actually going to be in the room and that there was going to be a decoy. I don't know how she knew that. Good on her. There's no, nothing is indicated in the story to, uh, show that Aura was tipped off in one way or the other, or that she's just really, at all. really good at her job. Right. Right. So Padme's sitting there. We see Aura. In a vent, getting set up at the last moment, Ahsoka runs in, draws lightsaber, blocks blaster bolt, uses the force to pull to pull or sing out of the vent. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of banter that goes back and forth between the three of them for a while, and then. Aura fires off like 75 blaster bolts and Ahsoka blocks 74 of them, gets hit with one. Uh, and then it's Padme that shoots her, stuns her. Nice. Aura's knocked out. Uh, Typho is able to get the doors open at that point, comes inside. Aura gets arrested. We go back to Coruscant. Anakin is waiting there, so I guess it takes less time to quelch a planetary civil war than it does <laughs> take to find one assassin. Yeah. Or give one or two peace talks, however you look at that. Um, so Yoda's there also. He congratulates Ahsoka again on a job well done, and then... Ahsoka's like, yeah, but the real person behind it, because Aura had revealed that she was hired by somebody else. So, 
Yoda's basically like, well, think about what you know. You had some visions. Think. Reach out. What do you see? Right? And Ahsoka has a real nice description of what she sees in her visions when she looks back. She says, shapes, large, devouring, laughter, bizarre laughter, and purple. She's like, I don't know what that means. Did you know what was coming here? Yeah, I knew it was coming. Did you know? Quickly. Did you know before that? No. Okay. Nope. So, um, Ahsoka's like, I don't know what's going on. Padme's like, mm, I think I get it. Anakin's like, I don't know. It could be anybody. Like you piss off so <laughs> many people. Could be anybody. Let's go get some lunch. Padme's like, no, with that description, I totally know who it is. So, uh, we cut to our last scene, I guess you could say. This hover speeder is kind of going through this large open area. You just see a bunch of lights. This big area is uh, revealed to be a prison. And Ahsoka, Anakin, and some random clone trooper float up to a particular prison door, open up. Ahsoka confronts one Mr. Zero the Hut, And uh, she says... Oh, Zero, I know what you did with Padme, and you hired Or Singh. He was like, no, I didn't. And Ahsoka's like, yep, we captured her. She told us. And Zero's like, I should have. I definitely should have hired somebody else. (laughs) And Ahsoka's like, ha, we got you. That's a confession. You're going to be in here forever. Peace, see you later. And they leave. And uh, Zero's all pissed and yells and Double no, fish shakes in yeah. the air, and he <laughs> says, "Do you know yeah, what fish, I'm capable yeah. of? Capable right. of? Capable of?" And <laughs> that echo trails off into the Iris Inn and cue loud music. At that point, cue loud music. Yep, I so, love Zero the Hut. Yeah, Zero is a fun character, and it's this is an interesting. Um, just to, just to start at the end here, uh, this coda you know this epilogue scene whatever you want to call it uh this is a very well done version of you know leaving open threads like it's it's solving this episode but it's leaving enough open threads to just carry the series on versus um what's that episode i keep making fun of where uh somebody tries to poison obi-wan and anakin and they swap drinks but then it just like cuts out for no fucking reason, like out of nowhere. Like they're at some weird club party. Yeah. But like Dooku, something. It was like a Dooku, Dooku captured. But, yeah, it was. Yeah, Dooku captured. Or it was like leading into Dooku captured or whatever. Yeah, I think like was... the structure of that was so fucking weird. But in this one, like it feels right. Like the scene doesn't like it doesn't come out of nowhere per se. It's definitely kind of like an extra turn we're taking. Um. I think it's an addition that didn't necessarily need to be done. So Ahsoka gives this description. Mm-hmm. Padme's like, I know who it is. Right. At that point, I'm like, okay, this is the end of the episode. And I look down and I was like, nope. wait, there's like, going. T- there's like yeah. three, there's like three minutes left. And then they yeah. kind of cruise through this open area, open air prison and, uh, pull up doors open and when it's either Anakin or Ahsoka that is like zero at that point, you could have cut it, but yeah. nope. Then Look, we have to, I don't then disagree. We sh- like the episode could have still ended at any of those points, you mm-hmm. know, but having this extra scene, it, like it felt like, um, like a, what is now a Marvel style, like mid credit scene, mm-hmm. you know, versus whatever the fuck the other episode was doing. Right. Like, there was there two... was still some there's still just some sort of natural flow into this. I don't you know it, I I it agree tacked, with you. Yeah, I it agree could have been with... tacked to another episode, that would have been fine too, but mm-hmm. you know. Here I, I thought it played well. Yeah. I agree with you, but there was too much dialogue in the actual jail cell. Like I don't disagree there either. Yeah. I you know, like zero, like, oh, what are you guys here for? Like, hey, we fucking caught you and he could have been then it could have been immediately to like 
you know, Zero could have just been like, oh, did or did you guys figure it out or did Aura rat me out? I should have hired somebody else, you know. Got to get revenge on that Padme. She's ruined my life. Look at what she put me in. <laughs> Instead of, hey, we know you did it. I didn't do it. Uh, we captured your girl. She said you did it. Oh, really? She said I did it? Yeah, she said you did it. Oh, man, I really should have hired somebody else. Hey, we caught you. We didn't even know that you did it, but you just said that you did it. Oh, what was me? Oh, I'm so dumb. You know. That's definitely still a weakness of this show. And oddly enough, I think all Star Wars shows kind of have this weakness. Like, every now and then they'll break out of it. But for a visual medium, they do not use visuals to their full potential at all points. Right. Right. Like really like like you were saying, all I really needed was like, oh yeah, there's still a mystery of like who hired Aura and then Pat um uh Ahsoka could have like done her searching and then Padme could have been like, Oh, I know who it is and all we needed was like one shot of like zero turning around his jail cell. Like that would have been fine. Cut it there. Like I don't I don't need Ahsoka to meet them, but there's something about this show in particular that, like you're saying at the beginning of the episode, Ahsoka like talks out loud for very obvious things, right? She self exposits like, for sure. Well, like this is kind of a show that, like, as somebody is like lying down to go to sleep, even if they're in the room by themselves, they, I feel like they would just go like, "All right, I'm gonna go to sleep now," and then like lie down. Yeah, yawn. I'm so tired. I should right. rest. And down they go. Yeah. So, yeah, I I agree. It's it's a long scene at the end. Um but yeah, it's yeah. I Yeah. Just how All right. the show goes at this point. So, thumbs up, thumbs down. What do you get? I I have my problems with this episode, but I I enjoyed it enough i'm gonna give this one a thumbs up okay yeah so it it, i think it flows really well like there are a few hiccups here and there i i think the the scene in the middle uh over the hollow chest maybe it could have been just progressed a little bit quicker Mm -hmm. you know but i i think yeah i i think the show this episode had a shorter story and then it was kind of padding out certain things I here agree. and there. I just looked but, at the runtime on this, and uh, it's right about the minimal runtime for one of these episodes at 22 minutes, 36 seconds. So I'd, right. it wouldn't surprise me if they did need to kind of add a little bit of fluff to right. to get all the way to a, a full episode runtime. But I will take fluffing one story over adding an unnecessary B plot that just Mm -hmm. kills and wastes time. Yeah. I guess I didn't even think about, think about that. This is a straightforward a plot only, no a plot B plot. Yeah. Um, that's what I liked about this. It was just like one story. It it progresses, it moves forward. That's why like, despite being the, uh, you know, as short as you can get with a, a television episode, it still it still flowed. It still moved, at least for me, and I that was enough for me to go along with this episode. Yeah, I gave this one a thumbs up as well, and mm-hmm. for me, it is it's a hundred percent solid thumbs up. Mm-hmm. Like there's there was not a time from start to finish where I questioned it. Yeah. I yeah. I put this on. I watched it a couple days ago, and I was like, well, I know what my rating is. Like I didn't have right. to question yeah. it. I knew what it was. Uh, it really is a great episode. It's nice to see um, a not Anakin, not Obi Wan episode. Yes. Yeah, we have had some kind of Ahsoka centric episodes, but she's always been paired with some other Jedi Master, and this is just Ahsoka on her own. And yeah. she does kind of tag along with Padme, but it's it really is Ahsoka driven, and yeah. um. And it's Ahsoka's, not not just an Ahsoka-driven episode from, like, a character standpoint in terms of, like, this is going to focus around Ahsoka as a character, but the actions that kind of 
kick off this story are literally Ahsoka driven. Right. right. Like when she goes to Yoda and she says, I'm, this is what's going on with me right now. And I don't really know how to handle it. And he kind of says, you know, slow down a little bit, Mm -hmm. think about it, make the decision that you think you need to make. So from that point on, it's 100%. Yeah, what is happening in the episode is done because Ahsoka is making certain decisions. Right, absolutely. Yeah, and I really appreciated that point of this episode for sure. Yeah, it was it was it was nice. Um, you know, I'll say congrats to Katie Lucas. I don't know if this is the first episode that she wrote, but uh, it's either the first or the second that we have seen. Uh, the first one that we've pointed out, and if all future episodes that she she took part in writing, you know, if they come off as good as this, then then kudos to her. Yeah. So, capital B bad guy, I definitely have Aura Singh on this one. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. No two ways around that. Yep. But, do uh, you got any other comments here? No, no, just overall good episode. Yeah. It's Strong not, episode. It's been... Looks like two or three weeks since we've had a little bit of positivity coming at the end of end of these Aren't the Nerds You're Looking For episodes on the Clone Wars. So this was a nice refresher. Uh, from, Definitely. From Definitely. here to next week, uh, although we have been progressing chronologically for the and uh, episodically as far as release goes for the past past couple weeks we're jumping back to almost the beginning of season three to arc troopers which um preview that is part three of a story arc that was spread out across three seasons so we'll talk more about that next week very cool Uh, and we'll have to we'll have to see what comes there but um shout out as always to kevin warren who did our artwork. You can contact him on Twitter at they call me K dub. Uh, Lindsay was kind enough to do our opening closing music. You can email her. What Strange is fantasy, Strange music, fantasy at music at gmail.com. gmail.com. Mm-hmm. I always have a yep. hard time transitioning from Twitter to an email address. <laughs> so let's try again. Uh, social media. You can reach Lorenzo on Facebook uh, the handle there is not the nerds podcast. I'm on Twitter at not the nerds. Our email address is not the nerds podcast at gmail.com. So aside from that, you know, check us out on YouTube. Give us a subscribe over there. Tell your friends, uh, be safe. I don't know if you're in the polar vortex of the, right. Yeah. Hopefully it's done by the time this episode releases <laughs> yeah i think it should be everybody yeah hopefully everybody's all good and out of that and you know we we're making our motions towards uh you know it'll still be winter time but yeah moving, moving past it you know, next, moving next past the worst hopefully i'm i'm hoping that as well so next week is arc troopers and until then i've been kevin lorenzo fon here These aren't the nerds you're looking for. Bye-bye.